I've worked at large companies with hundreds of thousands of employees and small companies with a team size of a bobsleigh team. Structuring teams in the case of the latter is easy, but doing that at a large company might be tricky. My current employer is a traditional German company called Bosch, and I was quite impressed by how agile software development teams were organized there. This obviously doesn't mean that all large companies have the same structure, but most of the older established companies follow a similar pattern. For example, companies like Oracle, FedEx, and Porsche are using the same framework that Bosch does. On the other hand, Google and other fan companies like Facebook and Amazon have a custom model. Nevertheless, it's worth learning about these so that you know what to expect from your future employer if you apply to one. I'm gonna draw all of that on a blackboard so we start with a team of five. That's a small team. I would say every person has a role here. Someone is more experienced and is expected to help those with less experience. Someone has more domain knowledge and maybe someone is simply organizing the backlog. Just note that that doesn't necessarily have to be a cross-functional team. They can all be backend developers, for example. Anyway, this is how a very small company of literally five or six people would function. Basically a startup that was just established yesterday. But now let's scale our company. Now we have 25 people in our tech department. And this is what most of us would normally experience. If we're developing our product in an agile way, we try to come up with domains of our products and divide our pool of developers, POs, designers, and agile coaches into five or six product teams and expect them to work together. At this point, we're improving our product by continuously iterating over features that the PO shares with us. Expect all the traditional agile, well, Scrum or Kanban related ceremonies, like for example, spring planning, daily standups, and so on. You get the idea. Every team working on a domain is also expected to be aligned with other teams on a constant basis. It doesn't mean they have to iterate at the same time and have planning synchronized, but rather align on a product level, maybe on some kind of a cross-domain meeting with, for example, where only POs are present, as well as have a common meeting for all the other developers. For example, a set of developers meeting with each other to make some tech decisions for the sake of some standardization within the company. Some might actually decide to use an extra layer of organizing the roles, such as the Spotify model. What is the Spotify model? Well, let's have a short detour to explore this quickly. A long time ago, Spotify came up with this model that was supposed to help them grow fast while having a clear and high quality of communication within a company. Basically, teams were called squads and they had to be cross-functional. A collection of teams striving to achieve a certain goal was a tribe, and individual developers from a particular discipline were involved in a chapter where they align. For example, a front-end chapter or a data science chapter where data scientists from all squads form their own regular meeting. Guilds and alliances are another layer of abstraction. All this works quite well, but let's come back to our top. Now, back to our mid-sized company. Let's scale it further. Let's say our software team is between 100 and 10,000 people. What we're gonna do is, well, we keep this how it is, but since our company is bigger, I would guess that our product has grown bigger too. Now, a domain that has been assigned to each development team has subdomains that essentially require a similar size team on its own. Now, the original domains though are still there. But how do we bring them together now that now that there's no team per domain, but rather a subdomain? Well, we introduce an agile release train for a particular domain. Yes, imagine it's literally a train and subdomain teams are the wagons. Teams have a priority, which is improving a subdomain within their release train. This way, this team doesn't have to care about other teams, which reduces the cognitive load. And now you have a company within a company in a way. As you can imagine, the teams are aligning the same way, but within this agile release train. The question is now, agile release trains need to align with each other too. How is this done? The answer is, well, we add another train on top, a solution train. Arts, aka agile release trains, now act as teams and need to align within the solution train. Now you see that we have a clear hierarchy of value flow. Exactly the same ceremonies are held on a solution level. For example, if we talk about the product side specifically, then this is gonna be like which arts will be tackling which features. These features are then tackled on the art level and are distributed to teams. Don't get me wrong, not all decisions are made top to bottom, but strategic ones are. Usually large companies focus on multiple products though. 
I don't mean a giant like Google. They have a different beast with the custom frameworks that they're using. But most of the large tech companies like Cisco, American Express, and so on, are using one of the frameworks similar to this. And this is exactly why we need another train on top. No, I'm kidding. Actually, no trains anymore. But instead, we're going to have a portfolio. And within this portfolio, we have different products. Let's say we have Gmail and let's say we have YouTube, just as a hypothetical example. And now what we do is we simply copy and paste the same structure for each product in the portfolio. This is the same level where everything that has to do with government budgeting is happening. Let's say the usual upper management stuff. As you can imagine, we don't have any agile rituals here. Since we're dealing with different products, but there's still some alignment that has to be done to ensure that the business is running in the right direction. Now that we're done with the structure, let's talk about the main roles that live within the structure that are not so obvious. The same way that we have a product owner within the team, we're going to have product management and business owners on the art level. Then we're going to have a solution management here and epic owners here. These people deal directly with the product just on different levels. That's not all. We need a person who will have a technical oversight of teams on the art level, but this obviously helps with collaboration and standardization. That's why we're going to add an architect here, a solution architect here, and an enterprise architect here. Also the scrum masters, because they're also on the first three levels. This is pretty much how the company I work at is organized. Hope this was insightful for you and you know what to expect from your next big employer. And of course, friends, make sure to check eraser.io out if you like this dashboard and all these illustrations. And if you want to scribble something out on your own, make sure to check it out. It's a great application and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it as well. And now I have to say goodbye and I will see you in the next video.